Good afternoon, everyone. I wasn't sure what my cue was until the mic turned on. So, first of all, I'm amazed that all of you are still sitting after the long day. I know how tiring it is when you have to do this, uh, you know, you're trying to do so many things at the same time. All of you have work you've left at home, uh, you know, in your offices, stuff at home, obviously. Uh, but what I want to do is make sure this 45 minutes for you is useful and hopefully somewhat um, interesting enough that you can ask more questions and we can help you answer those. So with that in mind, I thought I'd give you a five second advertisement about where we are in the Solution Showcase. I'm Ashu Roy, I'm the CEO of eGain. And we have a booth at 503, and we are doing something more than just show you software and tell you more about what we can do to help you. We are also going to give you an opportunity to play our dream AI cocktail game. And regardless of what cocktail you win at the end of it, we'll give you a Belgian beer glass. And what is more important is we will give you the opportunity to try and buy our solution for no commitment, no charge, no cost in the cloud. I know it sounds too good to be true, and in fact, that's the thing we have heard from so many people now over the last year and a half that we've been doing this. This is too good to be true. We said, well, try us. If you feel that there is any catch, you can walk away. And so far, over 50 companies have tried this, and 75% of them have turned out to become our customers. So we do want you to give it a shot, see if you like it. That's my only spiel for the moment. Let me turn into more important things. AI in customer service. I feel like for those of us who have been around in technology for some time, AI feels like the way internet was in 1994. Those of you who were working and you know, in professional careers at that time probably remember internet meant anything you wanted it to be. It's really hard to tell what was the reality behind it, even though there was a lot of excitement, a lot of promise, a lot of conversation, lots of hype. But what does it exactly do for my business? How does it help me today with my business needs? How does it help me drive costs down, improve my customer experience, and figure out ways that I can make my, my, my customers more engaged? So what I want to do today is talk about specifics. I have with me my co-presenter, who will come up here in about 20 minutes, um, Maureen Ellenberger. And I will introduce her just now briefly, and then I'll introduce her when she comes on as well. She is, uh, or was, for five years up until March of this year, she was running the Veterans Relationship Management Transformation Program within the VA, Veterans Administration. And that was a massive re-engineering effort within VA where they focused on the customer experience and how to make that, meaning veterans experience, and how to make that easier, how to do it more cost effectively, and how to make innovation consumption easier. And I'm very, very happy that she's chosen to now, she's no longer at VA, but she's now in the private sector. And she's gonna share some of her specific experiences and the story of how an organization as large as VA, which is over 300,000 team members, has adopted core capabilities of knowledge and AI from eGain and is making significant improvements in their customer experience or veterans experience. So that's kind of the second half of this, uh, this presentation. What I'll do in the first half is try to give you my perspective on what AI capabilities are relevant, in my opinion, for customer service. So I see four buckets of capabilities that are most relevant for businesses that we work with and help. And we are talking about large enterprises, typically you know, north of a billion dollars in revenue or more, or governmental organizations of that same scale or scope. The number one thing, which is in some ways the easiest thing to go after for many of you, is to simply be more insightful, and I'm, and I'm jumping around here, but you'll see what I mean by that. Insightful about your analytics investments. Whatever your 
analytic investments are in customer engagement, customer experience, if you can be a little more uh, automated in that, in terms of triggering anomalies, in terms of finding opportunities where there are variances, automatically identifying them, that's the first level of intelligence, call it AI or whatever, but intelligence that is quite useful to make decisions in your organization. And those are fairly low hanging fruit. Then you get to what I would call language understanding so that the interface that you can deliver to your customers is easy. It's natural. It's spoken or free form text as opposed to structured input through a UI, whatever it is that you have designed for your customer that the customer has to learn, has to get used to. So language understanding as a capability is fundamental to a lot of things you can do within your customer service environment. The next bucket is how do you drive more decision support, more ability to enable your, both your end customers in self-service as well as your advisors or agents in the contact centers and customer service organizations, how do you enable them with the best possible decision support? In other words, reasoning that's based on a lot of data that you have about the customer, about the context of the inquiry that they have, and how do you infer the next best action and the conversational guidance and the process guidance associated with it? So that's the second bucket. The third bucket, which I sort of telegraphed right in the beginning, but there is a lot of opportunity in, is most of you are spending an enormous amount of time and money into collating a bunch of data about customers, about customer conversations, and agent activities and actions. And you're bringing it all together. And maybe not all together in one place, maybe they are still somewhat siloed, but you are collating all that information. How can you apply automation on top of that to identify patterns. And that's where machine learning comes in. And the ability to learn from large amounts of data, what people are calling big data, or whatever you want to call it, but essentially it's a lot of data. And that data keeps going faster and more channels come in and becomes more, more, more uh, available. How do you do machine learning on top of that? How do you get insights out of that in an automated way that can then inform your customer service operation or your ability to deliver automated service or assisted service to your end customer. So those are the four big buckets of AI capability that we see as relevant for your customer service operation. So let's get a little more detail on it. At the top level, every organization that's selling a product or a service would like to avoid service. A perfect product needs no service. But there are no perfect products. Yet, with the advent of IoT and a lot of other connected devices, it's possible to anticipate problems, it's possible to diagnose problems, it's possible to fix problems over the air. And those sorts of interactions tend to be very low cost, they tend to be very high customer satisfaction. So that's the first layer of artificial intelligence, or intelligence, shall we say, that can inform your customer service experience. The second is automation through self-service. What that means is when a customer decides to engage with you because they have a service request, how do you deliver that service in an automated way so that it's the human on your end is not involved? And the, the underlying piece, and you probably heard it from other uh, presentations today, or maybe you will tomorrow uh, from Gartner, there is this notion of empathy in customer conversations that's becoming very interesting and important. Turns out that most of us, you know, as a first person, you can instantly understand it. We really like someone who cares about what we do and what we say and how we say it and what our concerns are. Empathy drives customer satisfaction. And if you drive automation in self-service, it's really important to make that interaction empathetic. If it sounds metallic, if it's just about Tell me the question, I'll give you the answer, go away. Even if the customer has genuine but trivial concerns and the self-service solution or the experience cannot incorporate that, then it'll fail. 
people will not adopt the self-service capability. They'll escalate, and you'll get a lot of calls or digital inquiries coming into your contact center. So that's an important part, and there, the whole virtual assistance solution is becoming extremely popular now. Now, a word of history from us at eGate. We started selling virtual assistant products um, a short while ago, in July of 2000. When we, uh, when we started doing that, and in fact, that was before the first uh, dot-com meltdown, for those of you who might remember. And it was really interesting and a lot of hype around it, and then the, the digital sort of meltdown happened, and suddenly no one wanted to talk about virtual assistants anymore. And so we went into this nuclear winter, just like AI, of virtual assistants. But we kept innovating, we kept adding capabilities, we kept selling the solution to customers who did want it, and now we are back in an environment where virtual assistants are the best thing in the world. Everyone wants to try it. And what we have done since then is not just improve the virtual assistants capability, which is really important for customer service because of the empathy part, because it's emotionally intelligent, but also that it's connected seamlessly with all the engagement and knowledge capability that you have within our solution, which means that any virtual assistant, and you can take this as a, as a postulate, I wouldn't call it a law, uh, any virtual assistant that claims to be wide and empathetic cannot by definition be equally deep. Depth in conversation is something that you have to have in a separate AI kind of box, if you will, and connect it with the layer of conversation. And that gives you the full depth and breadth of experience in self-service. So anyone who's pitching to you a VA product that can, through conversational automation, solve all your problems is not being no, sincere. Then the third piece is augmenting your agent or advisor population with decision support tools. And that's a long phrase. What I mean by that is, and we have seen this with a customer, and I'll show you some, some stats on that. This, Lots of large businesses have understood the value and seen the value of process guidance across their entire customer service organization so that all their agents or advisors have the same level of decision support, of conversational guidance, of process automation that they're able to benefit from. And I'm talking about conversational automation here. I'm not talking about long-lived processes. That's a task that gets to another desk and so on. I'm not talking about BPM. I'm talking about the problem solving or the advice that happens on the phone with a customer. How do you pr provide the right level of guidance around that? And there, AI has a big role to play. And we have done it for, like I said, and as it happens, we started selling process guidance in 2000 as well. I bought two companies in 2000. One was Inference, which was a leader in, in AI for process guidance and, and decision support, and the other was Big Science, which was a leader in early stage VAs, both in 2000. So we've been doing this for a while. We've got it working really well as a solution, as a platform. The last piece is somewhat aspirational. We see this as an area of great opportunity, and that's why we think it's an area that we are investing in, and we will continue to do that. But the idea of looking at the big data that your customer service organization and operation is generating constantly, real time as well as historic, and to be able to have these AI bots, which are essentially small units of encoded intelligence, that are looking for specific anomalies in the big data store that you have. And all of them working in concert can spot trends and spot insights that can then be either automatically used to, to adjust your customer service organization's uh, sort of resource management or provide a level of suggestion to humans who can make the final curation decision and execute. But that's some ways away. Yeah, I mean at least a year to 18 months away, but there's a lot of excitement around this because of the opportunity it presents. So let's walk through a couple of customers today who are benefiting from our solutions with this AI piece added to the other parts of our solution set. 
So this is HMRC, uh, the UK equivalent of IRS, a very well-loved organization in UK, as you can well imagine. Um, everyone loves to talk to HMRC, just like we love to talk to IRS. We implemented the solution as part of their digital government initiative about three years ago, and it, through a variety of sort of program uh, execution, we got to the solution implemented for them early 2016 for what they call the self-assessment period. Net-net, we have a solution implemented for them. It's a much bigger one, but the one I'm talking about here is the, the virtual assistant, which is called Ruth. Ruth happens to be the customer service director, by the way, uh, for HMRC. And she wanted her name there, which is great, direct to the boss. And what this did was quite impressive in six weeks. Now, this is not just a VA. Behind the VA is an escalation seamlessly into chat, which is, again, the game product. So the customers never left stranded in this experience. And all the context is transferred seamlessly. You can see the numbers. It's quite impressive. And this continues to now develop and grow. Another example. Now, you might say, I'm sitting here in Vegas in the US and talking about European customers. Turns out. Um, there's a lot more, at least in the last few years, there was a lot more openness to sort of AI kind of capabilities in our European customers at that time than in our US customer base. And now that in the US we're seeing a lot of interest, that's perfect. So bringing some of the real proven success stories out back to the, uh, to the US market for us. We implemented this, or rather Everything Everywhere, which is the largest mobile operator in the UK. Now they're part of British Telecom. They implemented our solution about four years ago, which included process guidance and knowledge management for 10,000 advisors in the contact center, at, at one time probably 6,000 peak kind of thing, and 550 retail stores and all the associates in that, which is about 10 each roughly in each of the stores. And what they ended up doing at this, as a result of this is to eliminate product training for all their agents. And every week, they update their process guidance tool with up to 100 bits of changes, 100 new changes, some new stuff, some adjustments. And if you are not following and using this AI tool, this process guidance tool, you wouldn't know what to say. And as a result, what they have seen is some phenomenal improvements. This, by the way, was exactly the stuff that they presented at our customer event in March of this year. So this is not coming from me. Some quite impressive capabilities that are possible because of adding AI, which essentially drives process guidance for these 10,000 agents. Let me move to the last section that I think is kind of, as I said early on, analytics is an area where you can get a lot of quick wins. And for us, Analytics is an area that we have invested in pretty heavily in the last two and a half years. Uh, we acquired a company, merged with a company that was very strong in the contact center analytics space called Exony about two years ago, a little over two years ago. And since then, we have taken their voice-based analytic tools and extended it to the digital side. So now we have the end-to-end -end voice and digital. And what that allows you to do is start to look at patterns across not just customer journeys, not just one channel versus another, but across all channels, across all customers, and collate that and bring that together with agent journeys as well. And start to look for these insights today, or historically, those insights would be, look, would be discovered by eyeballing stuff, right? So operational analysts and managers would look at it and eyeball it and find patterns. Now what we're doing and starting to work on, this is forward looking, just to be um, transparent. What we're doing is building these small AI bots, which, which are not that complicated, I mean, it's technology, but what they allow you to do in the background is track all the trends that we have, so the, the, the visualization that you would typically do with humans, now we take that input data, the visualization data, which is essentially a table, and then allow the AI bot to observe anomalies, not just in that snapshot of a table, but also 
trending over time, trending over other dimensions, looking at slice and dice. It's, it's quite straightforward. But what the, what the benefit of that is that when you take a bunch of these AI bots, some bots that are looking for AHT variations, some that are looking for NPS variations, some that are looking for customer effort bottlenecks, and you can aggregate the triggers of all of them through our reasoning engine, and you get something which is much more intelligent, much more interesting. So I just wanted to give you a feel for what AI can do in today's world for you in customer service, as well as moving forward in the next 6, 12, 18 months. But I do want to caution us. There is no one tool, not one technology that can solve all the problems that you have in customer service. So I'll give you a simple example. What do I mean by this table? If you look at this two by two, for those of you who like consulting um, work, meaning consultant presentations, you'll, you'll appreciate the two by two. Um, take the top left of this two by two. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. Let's look at ways to improve sales. So improving sales conversion online, which is a big area of investment. Nowadays, it's sort of merging service and sales in, in the online world. So depending on what the customer has done so far, the history you have of them from the past, all that information, their behavior on the site, when and what should you present them? What, should, what sort of assistance offer should you present? That is a non-trivial piece of knowledge to encode and maintain in, uh, in a way that stays relevant and fresh. It's not easy. You can try trivial options, and they all work well. But if you want to get to the next level, it's not easy to encode that information. Because you create a bunch of rules, and they start to fight each other. So. That's a very interesting place to apply machine learning. You can learn through neural networks, which are fairly straightforward. And you can apply that learning with the confidence that even if you're wrong once, or, you know, once every four or five times, it's not the end of the world for your business or for your customer. In other words, in aggregate, you get the right response. But at a unit level, you're not creating a catastrophic situation for you. Perfect place to apply machine learning without any curation. Now, I'll give you another example. Let's say you're talking about healthcare or financial advice. If a customer is calling with a question and has a question about financial future planning or healthcare, applying machine learning without curation would be extremely dangerous because the opportunity cost of getting it wrong is very, very high. So what you end up doing in those cases is apply supervised learning and apply the decision support tools, the sort of tools that we have applied, for instance, in places like Everything Everywhere and VA that Maureen will talk about shortly. So what I'm trying to say is that your AI technology choices should depend on the kind of business process and business situation you're trying to resolve and address, as well as your ability to capture the know-how and encode it in a cost-effective, timely way. So at the end of the day, you want solutions. And that's really what it is. AI is the X factor, as we have mentioned. And that's what we are trying to provide to organizations like yourselves. And what we have done today is we've announced our click to solve capability, which is a very simple idea, very powerful. And that is, look at any existing customer service experience desktop that you have, your agents are using. We can go in and we can add a small widget and a button, which is solve button, we call it, that'll, with a usual technology hooks, be able to extract all the context of the conversation and the IVR strings before that or history of the customer before that, if you allow us to, to look into the, the digital side of the, the house. And bring all that bootstrap, our knowledge and AI tool in the cloud, bring back the right solution or the right conversation to be had. Click to solve. Very simple. And we think that that's a very quick way to improve both your agent experience as well as the customer experience as a result. And broadly, we, we offer a much more complete suite. 
It includes all the digital capabilities, including phone handling as case management, through all the knowledge and AI tools and analytics.